guys. So in this video, I want to talk about um, an ingredient that is a very special ingredient in the way that it has not been used in a dietary supplement at all in the industry before. So um, I'm going to go over some details regarding why I chose to use this ingredient um, in our new product, in our kidney support product, and what exactly it does and why and how it is beneficial. Um, so first thing, the name of this ingredient is answering. Um, answering is uh, basically very similar in structure to a carnosine, which I'm sure most of you have heard of before. So let's go into the structures and I'll talk a little bit about that for you guys. So this right here is the structure of carnosine. Um, carnosine is composed of two different amino acids, uh, beta alanine and histidine, uh, which are linked together. So this right here is the beta alanine molecule, and then this is the histidine molecule. Um, they have been linked together to form what is known as a dipeptide, um, which is a sequence of two amino acids combined. So here's carnosine. And then we go over here, and this is the structure of answering. This is the structure of the ingredient that I have chose to include in this product. So it is a very similar structure to carnosine. Um, as we can see, the whole top of the structure is the same as carnosine, except there's only one change in this molecule compared to carnosine, and that change is right here. This uh, On this nitrogen that is a part of this um, what is known as an imidazole ring, um, there is a methyl group here. Um, compared to in carnosine, we have this nitrogen that is bonded to a hydrogen instead. So um, the implications of answering having a methyl group here instead uh, are quite large, and it basically makes it more effective, uh, more bioavailable, and I'm going to get into exactly how it does that. So here um, is something that we can use to take another look and just notice the similarities between carnosine, which is right here in the middle, and answering, which is right here. Um, we see the methyl group here on that nitrogen for answering, and compared to carnosine, we only see a hydrogen on this, uh, on this nitrogen right here. Um, and then we have some other structures here that are actually a little bit similar to carnosine. They have some um, similar structures. Um, right here we have what is known as ophidine, which is basically almost the same as answering, except the methyl group is on uh, a different nitrogen, which um, has a little bit of a difference in properties. Uh, most of the properties for ophidine are similar to answering, except um, ophidine is more commonly found in um, in other animals is not really found in mammals compared to carnosine and answering, which um, are both quite abundant in mammals. So let's talk a little bit about carnosine um, and how it is synthesized and also how it is uh, broken down um, in the human body. So here we have carnosine, and then you can see right here that it is um, composed of both beta alanine as well as histidine. So in order to synthesize carnosine in the human body, um, we need to have two things. We need to have beta alanine and we need to have histidine present um, as those amino acids. And so if we do have beta alanine and histidine present, um, we then, this enzyme carnosine synthase, um, along with some ATP for energy, um, can then produce carnosine as a result of these two uh, peptides to create the dipeptide. And in the reverse respect, um, now how carnosine is broken down in our bodies um, is by this enzyme known as carnosinase. So we have carnosine, and then we also have carnosinase enzymes present uh, in different parts of our bodies, um, as well as in the liver. Um, so carnosinase will break down carnosine into its two constituent amino, amino acids, beta alanine and histidine. So in order for us to reap the benefits of carnosine, um, we want it to get into the selective uh, tissues as carnosine intact. That means we do not want it to be degraded by this enzyme carnosinase um, before it's able to get into its target tissues. So that is um, one drawback of using carnosine, and that's also a way that 
using answering can come in handy. So in order to help prove my point um, regarding the effects of carnosinase um, on carnosine and on answering, um, there is this study that was um, carried out on the effects of carnosinase on carnosine and also on answering and ophidine. So uh, the study basically concluded that um, the rate of carnosine hydrolysis, which is uh, basically the rate um, at which this enzyme carnosinase was able to break down carnosine, um, was three to four times higher in carnosine than it was for answering or ophidine. So that means that answering or ophidine um, is basically three to four times um, less likely to be broken down and hydrolyzed into beta alanine and histidine by this carnosinase enzyme. Now in humans, um, answering is only broken down by carnosinase. So these carnosine-like um, dipeptides are unique in which in humans they are only broken down by carnosinase. So answering is only broken down by carnosinase. So if answering is um, three to four times less likely to be broken down by carnosinase, um, it makes it a better choice for us to choose rather than carnosine if we want it to get in the kidneys um, intact without being hydrolyzed or broken down um, by carnosinase. So I want to show you guys um, a study, which was a study done in humans on the effects of carnosine um, on uh, how it can benefit the kidneys. So this study was done over a period of 12, re 12 weeks for carnosine supplementation and um, the patients received a gram of carnosine per day for those 12 weeks. So the study concluded that supplementing with carnosine for 12 weeks resulted in significant improvement of oxidative stress, glycemic control, and renal function, which is kidney function. Um, just pro proving that carnosine could be a safe and effective strategy for uh, treatment of conditions uh, kidney related conditions such as diabetic nephropathy. So now um, we can also ask why exactly is carnosine uh, seen as beneficial in many different tissues um, such as the kidneys. So whenever it comes to muscle tissue um, there is actually a lot of histidine present. So whenever it comes to muscle tissue um, basically we can accomplish the benefits of carnosine by only having to supplement with beta alanine, um, which I'm sure many of you have known that already by just seeing how much, um, how many pre-workouts out there have beta alanine. Because beta alanine is all you need in muscle tissue um, to be able to synthesize enough carnosine um, to make it beneficial. But things are a little bit different whenever we are looking at um, human tissues other than uh, just muscle tissue. So to get those beneficial effects of carnosine, um, in different tissues, such as the brain uh, and the kidneys, for instance, um, we are really going to look closer rather than beta alanine. We're going to look closer at the histidine part of this dipeptide. So um, one study quote is this histidine and more specifically, it's imidazole and moiety. Um, let, me, let me show you guys what that refers to. That refers to that uh, nitrogen ring that I showed you before. Right here is the imidazole group. Um, so basically, this part of the ring on the histidine um, part of the dipeptide is what's responsible for many of these beneficial effects um, in tissues other than muscle tissue. So here the, the, the say continued say appears to be a prime bioactive component, whereas beta alanine um, mainly regulates the synthesis of this dipeptide. So in order to get these beneficial effects of carnosine, um, we would have to supplement with actual carnosine itself rather than just something like beta alanine like we can do in muscle tissue in order to get those anti-fatigue benefits. So now we know just how carnosine is beneficial in the kidneys. Let's take a closer look at answering and see what kind of research there is out there that shows its benefits in comparison to carnosine and why it should be more effective at providing these kidney benefits than carnosine itself. 
So here's another study um, that shows the effects of answering on the renal sympathetic nerve activity and also on blood pressure um, in rats. So it basically shows that a low dose of answering um, was also able to provide, um, was also able to reduce renal sympathetic nerve activity, blood pressure, and heart rate. So the renal sympathetic nerve activity controls blood pressure, but aside from only controlling blood pressure, it also shows um, some other activities towards uh, kidney function. So if renal, renal sympathetic nerve activity is high um, or there's too much activity, like there is in some people, um, this can usually involve high blood pressure. Uh, this can usually raise blood pressure because renal sympathetic nerve activity um, basically controls how much fluid the kidneys are gonna store and how much salt content, how much sodium potassium content um, is going to be stored in the kidneys. And of course, if there's too much fluid being stored, this can lead to a raise in blood pressure. So there is a, a treatment that suppresses renal sympathetic nerve activity that is known as renal denervation. So they basically burn um, a little bit of this renal sympathetic nerve just enough so that this nerve is no longer able to send um, as many signals to the brain um, to produce all these uh, high blood pressure effects. So without doing some sort of um, involved surgery like this, another way that um, studies have shown to reduce renal sympathetic nerve activity uh, is by the supplementation of things like carnosine and answering. So here we can take a look at carnosine metabolism in the human kidney. Uh, I'm not gonna get too into this, but I basically wanna point out that carnosine synthesizing and carnosine hydrolyzing enzymes, the enzymes that both help produce carnosine and help to um, break carnosine down into beta alanine and histidine, are located in distinct compartments in the nephron, which is a part of the kidney, um, and increased CNDP1 levels basically means increased um, carnosinase enzyme levels, which means um, the amount of enzyme that is present to break down carnosine is in higher amounts. And they've actually, so they've basically shown whenever you have increased carnosinase activity in the kidneys, um, this is much more likely to lead to um, things like diabetic nephropathy, which is uh, a diabetic condition in the kidneys. So what this means is that there's so much carnosinase enzyme present in the kidneys in this condition that um, you are not able to store enough carnosine in the kidneys to, to give those beneficial effects that we've seen carnosine able to do. So here's why supplementing with answering instead of carnosine will be more beneficial rather than supplementing with carnosine itself whenever it comes to um, kidney health. So we've seen that there's carnosine and answering present in the human kidney. Um, and indeed, answering concentration is actually two times higher in the renal cortex than carnosine. So we have answering in the kidneys being stored at higher amounts than carnosine. So another reason that answering will be more beneficial than carnosine is that all of these uh, carnosine-like dipeptides known as histidine-containing dipeptides or abbreviated as HCDs are broken down in the kidneys only by the enzyme carnosinase. So knowing this and knowing the information I provided earlier that showed the effects of carnosinase, the enzyme, um, towards carnosine and answering and showing that um, carnosine was broken down three to four times more than answering um, shows us that answering is able to reach the kidneys and reach those target tissues um, much better than carnosine without being broken down. It's gonna be able to get into those target tissues um, with the whole molecule intact without being broken down by carnosinase as much. So with answering um, being more resistant to breakdown by this enzyme carnosinase compared to carnosine, um, less answering is gonna be broken down, which results in more circulation 
in the kidneys of answering to be able to provide these benefits that all of these carnosine-like um, dipeptides are able to provide. So here's a summary on how um, these carnosine-like compounds or histidine-containing compounds are able to show benefits in the kidneys. And there's a couple reasons here. Um, so the first reason is that answering is able to reduce the level of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, pro-inflammatory cytokines are one of the main um, molecules that are responsible for cell damage um, in many, many vital organs. If we reduce the amounts of these pro-inflammatory cytokines that are being produced, um, that's one way that we can eliminate uh, many negative effects that are taking place in the kidneys. Another reason is that answerin acts as a protective factor against adverse effects of high glucose levels on renal cells or kidney cells. So this is going to have benefits um, for people who are struggling with things like diabetic nephropathy. Another reason is that answerin is able to suppress the activity of the renal sympathetic nerve, um, which uh, if we go back to that study that I mentioned earlier, um, showed that a low dose of answerin was able to suppress renal sympathetic nerve activity, which also has uh, effects on blood pressure uh, and that sort of thing in the kidneys. Now, another way that answering is able to provide benefits to the kidney is that it is a na natural angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, which is uh, a way to reduce blood pressure. So this goes back to the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which I do have a video on. So basically this prevents the enzyme which is able to uh, synthesize angiotensin II, which is the, the peptide responsible for um, causing many effects that lead to an increase, increase in blood pressure. Now, a very unique way that answering is able to provide benefits to the kidney is by inhibiting what is known as advanced glycation end products, uh, abbreviated as AGE formation. So these advanced glycation end products um, cause problems for many different organs in our bodies. Um, and so just read off here, the presence and accumulation of ages in many different cell types affect extracellular and intracellular structure and function, uh, basically saying that they cause problems. And here's another study that just covers the role of these advanced glycation end products in diabetic nephropathy. It says that advanced glycation end products are um, these proteins that accumulate in the glomerular blade basement membrane, which is a part of the kidneys. So they accumulate in certain areas in the kidneys in patients with diabetes and or end-stage renal failure. Um, ages are thought to be involved in the pathogenesis of diabetic nephropathy uh, through several different mechanisms. So a summary of ages or advanced glycation end products is that they are also actually responsible for many of the effects that come with aging, um, hence the name is also abbreviated as AGE. Um, they are involved in the aging process and also oxidative-based diseases, uh, diseases such as diabetes, atherosclerosis, Alzheimer's, and nephropathy. So usually the issue with ages in the kidneys is you have some sort of kidney dysfunction and this kidney dysfunction leads to the production of more of these advanced glycation end products. And producing more of these advanced glycation end products in the kidneys basically uh, creates a loop. Um, when there is more of these advanced glycation end products in the kidneys, it's going to cause more problems with the kidneys. So to begin with, there's usually some sort of kidney dysfunction and this kidney dysfunction leads to the buildup of more of these advanced glycation end products in the kidneys. Now, these advanced glycation end products um, need their own receptor to be able to activate and cause these negative effects um, in organs. So this receptor, which is also abbreviated as RAGE, um, is present in the kidney. So the more and more of these advanced glycation end products that you have accumulating in the kidneys, you then have um, them causing more negative effects in the kidneys because the presence of this receptor um, where they are 
able to do more harm is present in the kidneys. So there's plenty of evidence uh, for carnosine and carnosine-like peptides um, to reduce the amount of these advanced glycation end products in the kidneys. So carnosine and these carnosine-like compounds like answering are able to be effective um, by <clears throat> basically produ um, by basically inhibiting the formation of these advanced glycation end products uh, in forming. So I'm not going to get too technical here, um, but you can see that uh, carnosine is here and then it's able to inhibit um, all four of these different methods of how uh, these advanced glycation end products are usually produced. So on top of preventing the formation of these advanced glycation end products, carnosine has also been found to protect cells against uh, the damage that is usually induced by these advanced glycation end products in cells. So to summarize, in our new product, uh, Leviathan Kidney Sport, we are bringing a gram of answering per serving um, into this product, as well as a few other ingredients which have been shown to be beneficial in the kidneys. But I really wanted to um, clarify just all the beneficial effects of answering and how we can bring it into the world of supplements um, to show its benefits in the kidneys in specific. But I really wanted to clarify in this video exactly why answering um, is more effective than something like carnosine which already has clinical studies behind it, showing its benefits um, in the kidneys. So as a recap, going back to the structure, this is the structure of answering, and this is the structure of carnosine. So carnosine has a hydrogen here on this nitrogen, and answering instead has a methyl group. So this gives us profound effects in answering that carnosine uh, is not able to do. It gives us um, more resistance to the molecule of answering being broken down by carnosinase compared to carnosine. It gives us more resistance to answering being broken down um, by carnosinase compared to carnosine. Answering is um, three to four times more bioavailable because of that. Answering is also stored um, in twice the concentration in the kidneys compared to carnosine. So answering shows benefits in the kidneys because it's able to suppress renal sympathetic nerve activity, it's able to reduce blood pressure, it's able to reduce the amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines being produced, and it's able to reduce the amount of advanced glycation end products being produced. Now these are all um, different ways and in some cases very unique ways um, to bring more benefits to the liver that many other supplements out there are, are not able to do. So hopefully you guys found this informative and you have a better grasp on what answering is and how exactly it works to provide benefits in the kidneys. All right, that's it.